hey, here's some, some shocking things that I realized living here in Finland that I want to talk about. So let's get into it. Number one, dark winners. All right, so the biggest thing about living in Finland that I immediately realized, like many of us do, because I moved here in August 2019. Uh, so I was coming right out of the summer. The summer was ending. Um, and the first thing that I realized was the darkness. But the thing about Finland, let's be specific on this, because I don't want to, like, make people that are looking at Finland, like, be like, oh, my God, wow. The vampires come out at night in Finland. But it's more or less, like, a well, perfect place for, like, the, the twilight vampires. You know, they can come here. Well, I guess they... Their rules, they don't burn, but for vampires in general, come here. Finland's a perfect country. But, um, yeah, I definitely noticed that it was uh, depressing at first. I think initially for me, it was a little bit like, damn, like, bro. I don't think I got motivated until summer came, which we'll talk about later, where, you know, you have the same amount of torture you go through with the darkness level and, and how long it lasts, where the sun start going down at, like, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, which is crazy. And even worse, as the winter progresses uh, to the hours you have left, you get like two hours of, of like sunlight or whatever. But then the summer, you know, it gave more love by providing endless sun until the fact that summer's way shorter than the eight month winter that exists here in Finland. Number two, sauna slash ice swimming. So that was really cool moving here. Now, for me personally, living in America, I was always, always, always a steam room fan. Now, why? For me personally, I used to like it a lot because I used to utilize the steam room after my workout, sometimes before, but uh, I used to really like the steam room in regards to like, especially when you get sick. Oh, it was the best because it, it kind of reminded me of like Vicks, like Vicks uh, vapor mist. Like maybe when you were a kid, if you remember... Uh, that if you had a stuffed up nose or congestion in your chest, the Vicks uh, fumes, you know, in the room, the steam would help to open you up and, and, and help release all the mucus and blah, 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 blah. But I used to really like the steam room for that purpose and it made me feel really good. I do have to say that the sauna... I, I, because I have a sauna in the house and I feel like I just, I just toss so much water on that bitch because I'm really trying to get that steam effect and I know it's just dry heat, but at the end of the day, the sound was good. Add some eucalyptus and, you, and, you, and you're good. You're good. Number three, personal space and silence. Now, I'm going to say this. I like this a lot. Uh, now, I think personal space, at least from an America standpoint of view, is common for us too. Now, the only thing with that is that obviously, you know, it's not as anymore, maybe back in the day, but the societal standard for that is not as strongly rooted as it is in Finland, where it's like kind of like society itself almost enforces that. And the fact that it's like a cultural uh, joke that Finland has that or stereotype just lets you know. But I do think in America, obviously, you have people like me and stuff that are raised with a concept of what personal space is, and we're offended when people are, are within our personal, you know, bubble. But in Finland, I definitely have to say it's, it's like a real thing, and I enjoy it. I like it a lot. The only time Finnish people go beyond personal space is, you know, the dudes that are like drunk and women that are like drunk and all messed up. They the ones that will will try to invade your space. But the sign Silence. The silence is great. Like, okay, personally, I realize the there is this awkward silence that happens with fans. I'll give you a prime example. It's like you could be just mid conversation with them, and then just like when they say whatever their point is, whether long or short, they just stop, and that's it. And then it just becomes eye contact. So they just be like, yeah, you know, and that's pretty much how I feel about that. Yeah, and I wanted you to feel awkward about that because that's literally how it feels. Like, just straight up pure eye contact. Like, telepathically, they're saying, like, okay, do you have something to say or not at all? Is this conversation over? But we're just sitting here together in unison in one space. Next up, we got public transportation. I like the layout concept of all of those things I just said before. This uh, personal space, this silence, all enacted into a bus. For the transportation that I have been on here in Finland, uh, when I'm not driving my car, it's like a pin drop, super quiet, you know? And I love that. I love that everyone is just kind of like chilling, like just sitting on the bus, whether they got their headphones, even if they talking to each other, they're not overly loud most of the time. And I like that a lot. So public transportation, 
Super simple, super easy, relatively cheap, depending on, you know, where you're from in the world. To me, relatively cheap. Um, even for like a monthly pass, I can't remember how much a monthly pass. Oh man, that's pretty tough. I can't remember. So, but y'all let me know, cause I, I feel like I can't speak for fans. I'm saying from my perspective where I'm from, you can put in the comments your thoughts on that matter. It might be expensive to other people, so I don't know. But yeah, public transportation, transportation was pretty dope. Next up, culture shock is going to come down to this language for sure. I think the reason that finished, this is this is my personal opinion. Y'all let me know in the comments. I never really talk about this fully, and now I am. I'm giving you guys the opportunity to hear me speak on this fully. So I'm going to say this about the language. The language to me is difficult because the language is not overly popularized. The language to me is difficult because it's not a language that many people speak outside of Finland unless they know someone Finnish, they're half Finnish or they have family from Finland. Uh, it's not really as much of a global language at this point now in history. Uh, but I will say that now uh, I do feel a little bit more confident and I'm thinking to make more videos speaking in Finnish primarily, which is going to be something I'm going to struggle with. All right, guys, so I want to take a moment to give some reverence and honor to our winner of the last video's question where I asked, in paraphrasing, what are five cities in Finland that start with the letter T? Now, that I found out that apparently that is inexistent. There's only maybe two, possibly three, but I still was given an answer. For you guys that are new in every video at the end, I like to ask a question to give you an opportunity to have your name show up at the end of all of my videos as a supporter of this channel. But today's winner is, drum roll please, Tuomas Leone. And his answer was, that dark Finnish Ruoslepä will make a man out of you for sure. But those Rumberentortu, the best seasonal Finnish tree. But they put for his answer, he put Turku Tampere, Taival, ooh, this got me, Taival Kioski, Tarajoki, ja Toivaka. Yeah. To, uh, toivakka. Yeah, because there's only one A, Uksi A. Yeah, so congratulations for getting the opportunity to answer that question, and your name will be at the end of this video. Next up, culture shock for me is definitely going to have to be the trust and honesty. So for me personally, guys, for you guys that don't know, I run a business here in Finland where I create social media video marketing videos for different companies and different brands. I run a team and we are out there killing it for different brands and companies. And uh, for me personally, I have to say so far in my experience, working with Finnish brands and Finnish companies has been an outstanding opportunity. Now, I don't want to make this all about business because if you don't run a business here, then you don't know anything about that. But in regards to honesty, man, I've lost my wallet in this country like two times, maybe three times. And every single time I've gotten a call from the person that found it saying like, hey, is this your wallet? You can meet me over here to pick it up. And that blew my mind because if I was in America, that wallet is gone. Unless maybe I'm in a community that people know me or something like that, that wallet is gone and all the assets in it. Like it's typical if you in America, you lose your debit card, credit card, you cancel that thing immediately because whoever going to get it, they probably going to use it. So that's one thing I have to say that is super cool about Finland is I'm, I'm just going to say the honesty level is once again in society standard, kind of like the silence, personal space. It's way more built into the community. And I love that so much. Okay, next up I can say coffee. So I, I I am still a little bit, I'm still a little bit held back on this because the coffee consumption rate here in Finland apparently is one of the highest in the world, if not, if not second to like Cuba, I don't know. But to me personally, it's kind of crazy to know that coffee consumption is pretty high in America, but definitely way more sugared down and creamed up and latteed up and all of that kind of stuff. So that was something that definitely caught me off guard. I didn't expect coffee consumption to be so popular. All right, and last but not least, we got number eight, and that's coming down to nature. Now, this is very strange. So personally, for me, back in the States, I did enjoy my good walk through nature. But for me, it was something I did way more in my youth and in like maybe walking to school or something like that. It it blew my mind to move here and to see how important nature is to all standards of uh, young and old. And sometimes, obviously, when you're younger, you grow to reverence those things more. But 
Nature is definitely dope here in Finland because there's so much. Uh, I'm not sure if it, this is the case, but I'm pretty sure Finland has like some of the most trees uh, in, in nature and environment, you know. Uh, and and to me, it's like when you're just out there, you know, you, whether I'm camping, whether I'm uh, out there, you know, just in the snow or walking, going through the forest. I love how the forest is built in every city. Even when I'm in Helsinki, you can walk into the forest somehow, which is like mind blowing to me. Like to be able to walk into a forest, not like, not like a rucker, like, like from Rutgers Park. I mean, not like in, in New York where there's like that little park in the middle of it. You know what I mean? I'm talking about like, it's like, you can literally walk into like woods and there's like a path, but it's like crazy. Like you can literally walk out of the city and just, and that's the beauty about the woods is that you walk in the woods and the trees, they almost like, they make the city disappear. They make sounds a lot of times disappear uh, if you're not close to the main road. So that right there was a big culture shock for me. Like that experience of, of true connection to nature and, and organicness, you know what I mean? Now I'm not the overly naturalist kind of person. I'm not saying that. But I will say that it does make you take a moment to pause to reverence it. All right, so we're at the end of the video, but now it's time for the question. And if you want that opportunity to have your name show up in the end of the video, you're going to answer first. In Finnish folklore, what mythical creature is known for inhabiting the deep forest and is a shapeshifter and is also known to lead its travelers astray? Make sure to be the first one to answer that question in the comments to have your name show up in all my future videos. But you guys already know what it is. It's a Moika out situation. Moika out.